Oh, those are like garden tools. Gas station chaos, scrapping at the soda machine, and did he just give him a swirly? Today, we are headed to a secret research facility, breaking down and reacting to all of these survival medical scenes and catastrophic injuries from this super popular video game, Manhunt 2. Let's dive right in. Oh, okay, that's a good way to start, holy cow. Uh, what? Suffocation. Suffocation. You're not going to be able to breathe. You might be able to breathe out, but you're breathing out your CO2. You're not able to get more oxygen. Could be also strangulation in the sense of that bag causing compression down to your arteries and your veins of your neck versus enough pressure to push on your trachea, probably unlikely. The trachea is made up of tracheal rings that are cartilage, and it's really hard to collapse those with that type of bag. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what? The Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, excellent. Device that was used more probably as a scare tactic device versus actually used. The idea was you put somebody in one of these closed chambers, you'd shut the doors and you were pierced by these prongs, so to speak. You always worry about sepsis, infection, and blood loss. So a lot of different things. That was a straight piece, looked like a piece of wood, maybe something hard. And so that is not compressing the major blood vessels on the side, and that is compressing down on the airway. So what's happening is it's trying to close the airway. So if it's low enough, avoiding the cricoid cartilage, we use that when we intubate people. It also helps with displacing the airway and moving it side to side for us, as well as we will use that to push posteriorly on it, so that way it compresses down on the esophagus. Posterior head injury, you worry about obviously the whiplash injury, forcing the neck forward. A lot of people come to the emergency department with simple head injuries where they have a laceration, they have a hematoma, maybe an arterial bleed. We see them occasionally where somebody gets an artery nicked on the scalp and they just like bleed, like stink, they swell up. Another strangulation, a lot of force to the neck on this. They make the sound like it's snapping. It doesn't look like it. Probably unlikely that you're snapping the neck with that type of cord. He's ragging on your cord. We see people who do come into the emergency department with strangulation attempts or injuries, and we worry about the vessels of the neck. Not just that they cause compression, but what ends up happening is they can rip, they can form a blood clot, and then actually cause strokes to go to the brain if it's in the artery. Oh, nothing like a gas station. I mean, pretty good depiction of what potentially could happen if somebody's lit on fire. fire. Obviously, you worry about the burns that can happen first, second, third, and fourth degree burns. Fourth degree burns, you go right into the deep muscles and bones. Third degree, there's no pain. It's hard and leathery. Second degree burn, you have basically bubbling of the tissue itself, very painful and red. And then first degree is just red. You don't need to put anything on first degree burn unless you want aloe for soothing. But once the wounds open up, that's when you need to actually put different types of therapy on it. Oh my. It looks like the wound goes straight through the neck. It wouldn't bleed that way. You have a vessel on the midline that can bleed a lot. How do I know that? When we do emergent crikes, you can hit that blood vessel and it can bleed a lot. But the major vessels are on the side. The arteries sit underneath the veins in your neck. So when you actually feel somebody's pulse on the side, you're compressing down the vein to be able to feel the pulse and the artery pushing because the artery is behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody been hit by a full can of soda? Actually, it's quite painful. That amount of trauma could actually split the skin open. And obviously, if the skin is split open, we will clean out the wound, see if we need to do multi-layer closures, meaning we'll do a deep absorbable suture, and then on the surface, we'll do non-absorbable sutures on top. But pretty much the reason why we would do deep is to bring the tissue together so there's not as much tension on the top. Oh my gosh. Multiple stab wounds actually is a occurrence that happens into the hospital and the emergency departments. Often enough for me to know and see it in the past. First thing you think about is the wound to the neck. You're hitting potential artery. Those are hit, compress that area. You need a surgeon to be able to take you to the operating room to evaluate. You have different zones, zones one, two, and three. Anything in zone two needs to be explored in the operating room by a surgeon, especially trauma surgeon and a vascular surgeon. <laughs> A little facial trauma, why not? 
facial trauma in this circumstance, probably breaking your nose, possibly around the eye socket and causing some lacerations, bruisings, and abrasions. <laughs> thrown into the dumpster partially, getting a head injury and possible cervical fracture due to hyperflexion. Could that you know, cause issues? Unlikely in this circumstance. You're protected because of the shoulder there. Oh my gosh. The, am <laughs> the amount of like just sprayed blood. If this was arterial blood, it would be brighter. That would be from your aorta, the major blood vessel in your abdomen, but it's quite deep. It's behind everything. So the likelihood that it would spray out like that is pretty darn low. Could you hit some other arteries that are a little bit more anterior, so to speak? Maybe, but unlikely that it's just gonna spray out like that. Punching somebody in the face, could that actually cause bleeding? Yes. We see MMA, we see boxing, people can get their eyes and forehead split open. It just has to do with the compressive force. And then injuries to the hand, fractures of bone. You can actually go in between and through the metacarpals of the hand. You know, the concern is that's where the blood vessels are, the muscles and the nerves are running through. This is stuff that I actually, unfortunately, see on a daily basis at work, so it's definitely stressful to me. I specifically help formulate a supplement called Chillax, and it's basically the chill pill. Check it out on lifehappens.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Oh! Those are like garden tools. Bizarre gardening accident. Big fulcrum, so you're able to make a big move, so that could actually cause significant trauma. I've never actually seen that type of injury on somebody's neck, but obviously it is a potential because people have them around their houses. Ow! Thing you worry about if you get hit in the back. Are you hitting the heart? Are you hitting any major organs into the back? Are you hitting the aorta? You know, if you put a hole in the aorta posteriorly, really hard to get to, especially if you're able to open somebody up. But if it's a little bit lower in the back, it's actually safer than if it was an anterior injury because if it's anterior, you bleed out into the cavity of your belly. What? Oh my gosh. What an interesting injury. To be able to pop through the frontal bone. The frontal bone, really, really thick. It's pretty thick. You have a frontal sinus, just up your eyebrows, just above. And there is actually two bones and air in between. The sinus is basically an air pocket within the bony structures. It's thinner on either side, but above it is much thicker. Liquid nitrogen. Whoa. Terminator, was it Terminator 2? Judgment Day. Where they had liquid nitrogen. When I used to do research, vaccine research back in the day, we used liquid nitrogen and these big, massive canisters to store the samples. It has such a low temperature where it's still a liquid, but it's like super crazy cold. Could it get so cold that then you can cause a limb to potentially shatter or head? Probably, you probably need to be exposed a lot longer to that. There's a lot to talk about and a lot of traumatic injuries that occurred. But again, from a medical standpoint, there was a lot to unpack and a lot to learn from. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's other you know, clips you want me to react to or other games. Check out this playlist right here. Make sure you binge watch everything. And also to help the channel grow and to reach more individuals, please subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.